Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to be removing our dependency from the IntelliJ ID. Right, right now we we rely on the IntelliJ for running our tests, but we need to uh, remove this dependency because we going we need to be able to run these tests on a CI, and there is no ID on the CI, so we need to be able to run on the command line. Right, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using Docker Compose to start our application because right now we, ha we have been starting the application manually. We need to be able to start the application uh, along with the tests and we're going to be using Docker Compose for that. We also need to be able to run the tests from the command line and we also need to be able to set up different kind of tests. We need to have a sanity test, a regression test, so we need to uh, categorize which tests we want, uh, what what it's the type of each of the tests and we, we have different tasks to run different kind of tests right so this is also going to be doing and we need also to be able to run in different environment because when I run my test on a local environment it's one port it's a different port it's a different local it's a different URL it's going to be using localhost whatnot and the CI is going to have a different port. It's, it might have different configuration in, depending on the environment that you're going to be running. So we need to be able to uh, have different environments and different configuration for each environment for our tests. And last but not least, we're going to be setting up Circle CI to run uh, the tests on a pipeline, right? So this is what you're going to do. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of the next videos. Uh, and I'm also going to be posting the links for the previous videos so you can keep it up. And let's start. So we have we have the test that we are already very familiar with, right? Um, this is the test that we have. Uh, where is the test? There you go. Cucumber running Java. Cucumber running. So we have here the Swagger store, let's run everything. So we know that every, everything is working and running. Uh, so we need, right now we have been, we have been running this command here to start our application, right? And we, we need to have a more simpler way of doing that, right? And we're going to be using Docker Compose to simplify that for us. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a file here called docker compose yaml. And we're going to set up the version which version of Docker Compose you're going to be using. Different versions are going to enable you to do different stuff. I believe the version 3 is the latest. Uh, but if you, whenever you are using, if there, there is any new, newer version, then just use the newer version. We need to tell what kind of services we need. So services. And I, I'm going to name the service that we're going to be using. And that the name is Swagger. Let's start. Right. And this name is very important because this name is, is how we are going to reference this whole setup in the whole file in the file, right? So I can say what is the name of my image, right? Not the name, but where is my image? What is my image? We have been using this image here. So this is the image that it is going to use. We're going to give it a container name, and we have been using this name, pet store. And you need to choose the ports, right? So we have been using this port here, 1234 on the local host and 8080 on the container. So it's going to be 1234, 8080. That's pretty much it. Uh, I could have different services here. I could have service two, for instance. I could have database, and here's going to be image and whatnot. I would have database, 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 image as well, right? And this is the name that is going to be used in the file to reference 
uh, that service, right? And I can even choose the order in which the service is going to be executed, it's going to be run, this setup, right? Because uh, my service might depend on the database. So before running the Swagger Patch Store, I need to run the database, right? So I can say you run first the database, then service two, then Swagger Patch Store. So that's how we're going to do this by using this name here. We don't need that. It's very simple. Right, so now how can we run this? I'm going to stop Docker stop pet store. Right, the pet store is no longer here. And now I can do Docker compose up. Right, so but there is an error, right? And then there is because there is a conflict, because there is already a name of a container called pet store. Right. If I do Docker PS to listing all my Docker image, there isn't anything. So I do dash A to list everything that's running and that's not running. So I have here a Docker uh the, the pet store that's already here, right? I need to delete this one. So Docker RM and the name or i can do rm pet store as well right so docker ps dash a there isn't anything anymore so i can do docker compose up in the pet store is running right it's already here great so you can see that it, it got hold of my terminal and i don't want to do that right we have been using the we have been using the dash d to detach from the terminal right here's already down now i'm going to say docker compose up dash d because now it's it's not holding the terminal right the terminal is free for me great i'm going to do docker compose down to put it down. And now I'm going to do a Docker Compose up again. And now I'm going to refresh to show you one problem. I tried to refresh six, seven times, um, and it took six or seven refreshes to start the application, right? And this is what we're going to we need to fix now because we have the, although we have the Docker Compose, and I could call the Docker Compose from my tasks, my Gradle task, my build Gradle task. I could I could easily have a task that runs a command on a terminal. But you saw that it took me seven refreshes to for the store for the store to be up and running. Right, that that was the time that containing the, the application was taking to to be up and running. So if I run that, that command and I immediately try to run my test, it's going to fail, right? And you can try this out. Docker compose down, right? In the beginning of, uh, of this series, we, we saw that when we create a Gradle task, we have several tasks available for us. And one of the tasks is the test task. And I can run by this task this way. And you're going to see that everything failed, right? And it failed because we still don't know, but then we're going to take a look here and you're going to see that connection refused because the application is now running, right? And we need to start the application. So what you're going to do, we're going to be using a plugin on, uh, on Gradle called Gradle Docker Compose plugin. This plugin has various cap uh, Docker Compose capabilities. We're going to be using the default values, but there is a lot of configuration here that you can do, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to type, we're going to add the dependency here, which is this one. And the version is 0 0.13.2. I'm going to yeah, that's basically what we need, right? Great, but I also need to tell what kind of dependency it requires. So now I can say Docker Compose 
is required by, and I need to give a name of the task. Which task we need to run is the test task, right? The one that we just tried here on the terminal, right? So let's try now running the test again. There you go. So see dot compose up, creating the store and is waiting, waiting for localhost one, two, three, four, five. It's ready, running the test, compose down, removing the store. If we take a look at our test, not this one. Uh, if we take a look at our test, we, we have a couple of tests that we can try, right? We have, uh, it was actually that one, yeah, yeah exactly. So we can take a look that it ran. We also have the Cucumber report, app, build, reports, feature. And you have already, it was already executed in here, right? So what else? One of the things that's important to note is that it mapped, we, that's how we set up, right? We mapped the local host 1234 to 8080, and it was waiting for the local host one two three four five to be ready only when it was ready it let it go it, it let it go and uh the test was able to run and that's the beauty of it because now we have a way of uh spinning up our application and running the test without we have without the need to run the application manually right which loses a lot of time if we do that So basically that's that's this is what I wanted to show you. We now have a task that's going to allow us to run uh, our test through the command line without the need to do anything else, right? So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notification of my next videos. If you like this video, give the thumbs up and it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. And I'll see you on my next video. Thank you.